Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa. Five panelists, five topical issues, all completely unique with a singular purpose, to advocate for a better society. On today's edition, David is asking, are you looking up or down? And no, it's not a trick question. Libras' advocacy may look like a game of rhymes, as some might even say, mago mago, fit be like play play, but na serious matabidato. Just wait and see. Aisha Yusufu, the very same Bring Back Our Girls advocate, is also asking a question that reads like a riddle. Are we raising citizens or slaves? Hmm, let's pause and think about that one. And if you think you're in for some soul searching, then wait till Emeka finishes with you. He's also asking, what is a government good for? Hmm. Today, na jam season. Lucky for you, we have some inspiration to kick off the session. I'm talking achieving greatness, not in spite, but because of us. The clock is ticking. Let's get started. Destiny may well be a correlation of variables. The right person at the right time in the right place. Have you come across the video of 11-year-old Anthony Meso Mamadu dancing ballet in the rain somewhere in Lagos? If not, look it up. You won't be disappointed. I'm a believer in greatness against the odds. The spirit of resilience, fueled by self-belief and a belief in a just God. Indeed, the annals are replete with chronicles of people who rose to greatness against the odds. All they started off with was a talent here, a vision there. Their beginnings were notably insignificant, but today they're people of note. Today we speak of Cosmos Madika, Steve Jobs, Abraham Lincoln, Kelechi Amadi, and tomorrow, Meso Mamadu. It is a tale that is as old as time, but which never ages. We need to hear it now more than ever. Someone recently told me in the midst of the pandemic as a consultant physician training younger doctors, he would often remind them that the human spirit is resilient indeed. People will survive one way or the other. They'll find a way, he would say. So his caution would always be, don't let it be said that they survived in spite of us. Nigeria's story seems to be punctuated by the refrain, they survived in spite of us. They achieved greatness in spite of us. Sad, but true. God and the universe are constituted to ensure that the scales are justly balanced, no matter the evil weighted against it. And this is why we'll continue to come across stories of greatness sprouting amidst the soil of corruption. It speaks to the indomitable spirit of divinity in us and around us. 11-year-old Mesoma is the perfect epitome of this. In pants and a vest, he dances bare feet. He dances gloriously in the rain, somewhere in Lagos. Yet, he dances on a global stage, elevated by social media. Neglected by his country, he stuns the world. I want to encourage us with my advocacy that just as the sun will surely come out after the storm, so greatness awaits us in spite of the injustice that seems to be the signature of our times and our society. As it is written, a man's gifts will make room for him and bring him before great men. So stay faithful to your gifts, especially when social systems are unfaithful to you. Hone your talents diligently in readiness for the day of greatness, as surely as if you had an appointment with destiny. As for the rest of us who will have the opportunity to witness and encourage another's journey, let it not be said that they achieved greatness in spite of us, but because of us. I hear you, Aisha. You said hmm. you want to you want to throw in your hat. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, the words were deep. Okay. 
Please go ahead. We're listening. Oh, oh, oh okay. So those words were just uh, for me. Uh, it, it just said everything. Let it not be said that uh, they achieve greatness in spite of us, but because of us, in spite of us bringing them down, in spite of uh, in spite of the fact that we are not doing what we need to do uh, as citizens of this nation. We are not. We've not given our children the environment that they need to be able to excel on, on, on a global forum. They are excelling, but that shouldn't be the case. That, 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 that is, for me, is the saddest part of it all. It should be a situation whereby we are encouraging them. They have everything that they need to be able to, 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 uh, to, to thrive on the global stage, to be able to be there and be the amazing human beings that they can be and their talent will flourish. That's what we are supposed to do. And unfortunately, uh, as citizens, as parents, we have failed to do that. And it is very important for everyone of us to begin to ensure that in spite not just in spite of what we're doing, we go beyond that and begin to uh, ensure that because of what we are doing, we are giving uh, citizens of our nation more enabling environment for them to excel and take their rightful place in the world, which is right at the top. I like the advocacy, and I think that um, it's just kind of like um, tells the story of Nigeria in many ways, where this is a country that wasn't designed for success. Um, it was almost designed to benefit other people other than the ci its citizens. Uh, but in spite of Who does of it what, benefit? <laughs> oh, it benefits the people who set it up. The, okay. the you know, the, okay. the, 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 the there's a political system founders. that it was set up. Um, it's a, it's, we've had this discussion yes, on the show yes, before. Yes, yes, I remember now. But I think it's, it, it's, it bears repeating and based on your advocacy that in spite of the system, um, that you find occasional flashes of brilliance and talent. And, and the beautiful thing about talent is that um, it perseveres, I think, and it will come out. But, I, but herein lies the problem. We should design the system, our country, in such a way that it enables talent to, to prosper, yeah. to come out, not in spite of, you know. So every other thing is designed to, to stunt your talent, or to, to deny you the benefit of you even, you know, exercising your talent. Yeah. Whether it be creative talent, you talk about uh, people in the, in the creative industry, mm -hmm. books or, mm -hmm. or writers or filmmakers, high level of piracy, you know, and so on and so forth. So I think that, you know, um, this is really, it, it's more for calling each and every one of us to to just continue to do what you do, what you love to do, yeah. and the passion that you have. And, and, you know, for me, I believe that the more passionate you are, with a little bit of training, uh, um, you'll be able to make a success of yourself yeah. in spite of the system. The it might not be as big and as, you know, as, as stunning as all the people in other systems, in other countries. But I think that, um, you know, we should not, you know, don't lose give up hope. On your it just keeps striving. Yeah. 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 What I would just have to add to that is that on the on the personal level, I completely agree with what he said that the system is the most important thing because obviously without the system, regardless of any personal achievements, it's still going to be futile in the end. But on a personal level, those of us who who have who have certain gifts, who have certain talents, owe it. Yeah. I think not just to ourselves, but also owe it to the world. Mm -hmm. to do what we can to put those things out. I think um, if, you're, if you are in urban Nigeria, you have access to the internet, you have these basic facilities of life that most of, most of us have access to nowadays, the, you still, obviously, you are still disadvantaged in many ways by virtue of being in Nigeria, but the number of excuses is highly reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because in a way, the... The internet and technology has kind of leveled the playing field to an extent, yeah. not just within Nigeria, but globally as well. Yeah. And that has created new opportunities. That has created an entire new economy that is out of the control of those who set up Nigeria. So which gives you an opportunity to elevate yourself, if not necessarily in economic terms, certainly in intellectual terms. So I don't mean to sound like you know, an old, you know, old man lecturing people on this show, but from the point of view of someone who uh, interacts with people a lot on, on social media as I do, I think my, my big takeaway will be that those of us who, who have access to the internet, should the internet is a huge it. human resource. Yeah. We yeah. should use it in ways that are productive. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. 
uh, you see um, your advocacy would um, at first instance encourage you know um, our rulers I, I won't call them leaders to continue what they are doing say look well they will survive you know in spite of what you do what, whatever you like they will survive but on the flip side over time it will um, you know bring them to reality sort of to realize that look oh, you know, these people survived without us, so what's the use? Mm. So I think I better even do the right thing. Mm. Because now their story will be told without me being part of the success story. And then um, I also agree completely with David that um, the internet is a big stage, it's a big tool. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you're doing, uh, but I see, and I see a lot of people using it now. You see everybody now, you know, talk on record videos and, and, and share. Mm. And it goes far. You never can tell how the extent that it will go. Look at that young boy singing, um, you know, Christian hymns. Yes, I remember. And you'd see how, how, you know, that video had gone. And now, all of a sudden, the government who ought to be responsible <laughs> to him and now waking up to be responsible. Yeah. And, and so I would encourage people to don't sit down there and say, I do not have anybody to help me. Mm. Just keep doing it yeah. and put it out there on the internet. Yeah. And someday, somebody somewhere might just we'll see it. Because even and, the person who set and, up... And, and, sorry, sorry quickly. Mm. And then this, even these advocates that we do, you find out that your, 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 your uh, um, what do you call it, um, your intro or your take or your, your opening, um, your monologue, you can't tell the extent that it Where goes. Go, also, yeah. speak to people. Yeah. And, and so consistently, uh, money might not come at the beginning, but just have that passion and share it. And, you know, with time, you'll find out that the world, you know, will create a path to you. Yeah, yeah. True. I mean, because the person who set up the ballet school, he did it for free. There was no space. Um, I forget his name. I think it's called Leap Dance. And he, does, he just chose to do yeah. it for children in Lagos, downtrodden. And this boy just caught everyone's attention. Anyway. Just as I seek to inspire, David seeks to challenge. He has a question for us after the break.